everyone, my name is Katie and welcome back to my 11 plus exam videos. This video is going to focus on the math section of your 11 plus assessment. Now I have done previous 11 plus videos before which you may have checked out but this is just to give you a little refresh and um, some more practice questions for you to try out for the 2017-2018 edition. So a little about the exam. So any child who wishes to attend a grammar school will need to undergo the 11 plus. This assessment is usually carried out in the final year of primary school, which is year six. And depending on the area you live in will depend on the type of 11 plus test you sit. For example, people applying for grammar schools in Kent will sit the Kent 11 plus test. Whereas people in Essex will sit the CSSE exam. But both of these are similar and that they assess, they both assess how well a student is suitable to attend a grammar school. So generally there are four areas in an 11 plus assessment. So we have the English, Maths, Verbal and Nonverbal. And I'm going to create a video for each of these, okay? So subscribe to the channel and you'll be notified about when each of these videos um, are uploaded, okay? So the math section of the 11 plus exam will cover topics that have been taught in the Key Stage 2 classroom. We cannot tell you what the exact question types will be in the exam. Therefore, learning as many different types of math questions will be vital if you want to do well in your assessment. So below are some of the topics that have, have appeared in previous 11 plus papers. So we've got a range of different topics including addition, averages, reflection, sequences, patterns, distance, algebra, bearings, time, perimeter, area, so forth. And there's loads more that you can read there for yourselves. Okay, so that's just to give you an overall idea of what you could expect from the 11 plus mass part. Okay, so some useful resources for you. So I know this video will provide you with some practice questions, but I have created these other key stage two mass resources, which are proven to be highly resourceful for loads of people undertaking their 11 plus test or even if they just want to have a little refresh and a recap of different mathematical areas okay so we've broken down some of the key areas of maths including fractions decimals and percentages data and statistics geometry time and measurements numbers and calculations ratio proportion algebra and a practice papers guide okay so these are really useful if you would like more practice questions and improve your overall mathematical ability. And again, if you are applying for a grammar school in Kent, we also have specific Kent test resources for you, which are shown here. And again, these are broken down into clear sections of the Kent test exam. Okay, so let's move on to some practice questions. Now, I know in my previous videos in the last couple of years I usually go through the answers with you but I thought I would try something new for these videos and what I would like you to do is work out the answers to the questions and then leave me your answers in the comments box below and I'm pretty good at, get, at responding to people very quickly so I will mark these for you and tell you how well you're getting on and give you the correct answers if you've got any wrong okay Okay, so question one. Leah was fascinated with ladybirds. She counted how many ladybirds she could find each day for a week. Her results are shown in the pictogram below. So here is the pictogram. And here are the questions. So how many ladybirds did Leah see altogether? How many ladybirds did Leah see on Wednesday? And how many more ladybirds did Leah see on Monday than Thursday? So write your answers and then move on and we can put all those answers together at the end for you to leave me a comment below the video. So question two, look at the number sequence below, work out the next five values of the sequence. So you've got 1, 9, 17, 25, 33. 
So your job is to work out the next five numbers in this sequence. Question three, two numbers are added together to give the number beneath it. Fill in the grid below, okay? So as you can see, a number here would be added to this one in order to get 42 and then so forth. You can work out what two numbers are added together to get you to the next box. Question four, so below is an image of a 50p, a 20p, a 10p and a 5p. Using the information provided, work out how much money there is in total. Okay, so this tells you how many of each coin you have. Question five, complete the following fractions by making them equivalent to the fraction three sevenths. Okay, so you need to work out which numbers are missing in order to make it equivalent to three sevenths. And finally, question six, shade in three more squares so that the pattern has an order of rotational symmetry of four. Okay, so what three squares are you going to shade in in order for, in order to give it a rotational symmetry of four? Okay, so that completes the practice questions and I'm going to move on to some top tips on how to prepare for the maths part of your assessment. Okay, so the exam is designed specifically to test the kind of things you will be learning in your maths lessons in Key Stage 2. So it's important to brush up on all the key skills you've been working on at school as well as trying your hand at some example practice questions. The examiners will be assessing carefully the way in which you answer the questions in your maths exam. And with this in mind, make sure you pay attention to the details of your answers. Try to show you're working out where possible, so this can gain you extra marks. With the previous point in mind, it's also crucial that you ensure you understand what each question is asking you before you start to answer it. Reread a question if you are unsure. Make sure you allocate your time in the exam wisely. Whilst it's important to make sure you understand and spend time on each question to get the best marks, you don't want to end up rushing any questions at the end of the paper. When you are given your test paper, it will have recommended amounts of time to spend on each section of the exam. Whilst these times are only given as a guide, bear in mind that they have been formulated to try and help you make the most of your, your time. So try and stick to them wherever possible. The amount of marks that can be awarded for each question will be given in the margins of the testing paper. This should also be an indicator for how long you should be spending on each question. Generally speaking, the higher the amount of marks you are able to get, the longer you should be spending on answering that question. If you get really stuck on a question, don't spend too long thinking about it. Instead, move on to answering the rest of the paper and leave some time at the end to come back and revisit any questions you were unsure about the first time round. Okay, so that's it from me guys. I hope you liked this video and found something useful. Don't forget to check out my other three 11 plus exam videos because they will each focus on another area of the 11 plus exam. Remember to subscribe to the channel and hit the like button and share with all your friends and don't forget to check out the links below this video because this will link you directly to all of my resources I was talking about earlier. Okay, so thank you for watching and if you do have any comments or questions about the 11 plus exam, please feel free to leave me a comment below this video and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Thanks for watching everyone and I wish you all the very best of luck in your 11 plus exam.